First Lieutenant George Ham Cannon, known as Hammy to his close friends and family, was the second child born to Benjamin and Estelle Cannon on November 15, 1915 in Webster Groves, Missouri. Two years before the United States entered World War I, the Cannons moved to Detroit, Michigan, a blue-collar city that became known as the Arsenal of Democracy. As a student at Southeastern High School, Cannon participated in band and orchestra, house council, and as a senior, he planned to attend the University of Michigan. However, between high school and enrolling at the University of Michigan, Cannon enrolled at Culver Military Inst uh, Academy in Indiana, following in his grandfather's namesake's footsteps of military service. He stayed at Culver until 1935 when he accepted the University of Michigan to study mechanical engineering. At the University of Michigan, Cannon was a member of Sigma Chi Fraternity, the school's band orchestra, and a member of Scabbard and Blade, an organization similar to Reserves Officers Training Corps. June 1938, he graduated with honors with a Bachelor of Science degree. In his senior year, he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the, U in the Engineers Reserves of the U.S. Army. Upon graduation, he received a two-year scholarship for the U.S. Navy Academy in Annapolis. Cannon resigned from the Army and accepted the scholarship and position in the United States Marine Corps, where he served as second lieutenant. He was ordered to Annapolis on July 5, 1938 at the Philadelphia Naval Yard. First Lieutenant Cannon began basic training July 1938 and served as a sea marine until 1941. This experience eventually landed him on Midway Island. On February 16, 1941, Cannon joined the 2nd Defense Battalion, Battery H, in San Diego, California. In March of the same year, his battery joined the 6th Defense Battalion, and in June 1941, he was promoted to 1st Lieutenant. In July, his battalion set sail for Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Then on September 7th, 1st Lieutenant Cannon reported for duty at Midway Island. As platoon leader and a member of the Defense Battalion Coding Board, Cannon decoded Japanese messages. Four months later, at the age of 26, First Lieutenant George Ham Cannon lost his life going above and beyond the call of duty on December 7, 1941. The surprise nighttime attack at Midway, at Midway lasted only 23 minutes. The inadequate facilities at Midway could not withstand a Japanese attack, and despite doing their best to defend the base, the bombardment left four men killed in action and 19 wounded. When a Japanese artillery shell hit his bunker, mortally wounding Cannon, he made sure that all his men got out and the radios were running before leaving his command. According to the, to the Marine Corps records, George Ham Cannon repeatedly refused medical attention and stayed at his post until the bombardment was over and no one, else, no one else at that post was in danger. Minutes after arriving at aid station, Cannon died from blood loss. These heroic and selfless actions posthumously earned him the Congressional Medal of Honor for his sacrifice and bravery. First Lieutenant George Ham Cannon was the first Marine to receive this high honor in World War II. He was also posthumously awarded a Purple Heart, American Defense Service Medal with Base Class, Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal, and World War II Victory Medal. On the morning of December 8, 1941, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt addressed the nation to inform citizens of the sudden and deliberate attacks by the Empire of Japan. Roosevelt deemed December 7, 1941 a date which will live in infamy, and it did. The attacks on December 7, 1941 set off a domino effect, roping the once isolated United States into a worldwide war. For many Americans, this was a call to action, and First Lieutenant Cannon's hometown, Detroit, transformed into an extension of the Pentagon. Though George Ham Cannon did not see past the first day of the war, his service and bravery served as a catalyst for the United States' entry into the war, and an example of how other brave Americans could respond to their call to action.